welcome to another short live episode let me just set you up
Welcome, welcome to this short live episode. I want to show you something exciting today. So this is my second block. And here you can see the beetroot is looking good despite the strong winds that are snapping some leaves. Some leaves are breaking because of it's so windy, but they are looking good. On this bed, I have the, my cabbages. These are cabbages that form round heads, not like the Chinese cabbage that I planted that opens up. This one will form round heads. So I don't have much, but I've also done companion planting on this bed. The onions have not yet emerged. I've planted them here in between. Then as these leaves also grow, they will cover the bed, helping me to conserve water. So I have to bear with this at the moment because I can't get mulch. I can't get mulch. But they're looking good, they are strong. So here I'm, I've planted some more amaranth that is already coming up. I don't know if you can see. Let me take you closer. So here I have more amaranth.
the amaranth is coming up. So the other seeds that were planted here, I transplanted them to a new pot at the corner there. So amaranth is a nutritious vegetable. You can enjoy the green leaves or you can also enjoy the grain. And you can use, you can make flour with the grain and bake some bread, some cookies, or make some ugali with the flour or even in porridge. And it's high in protein. It's so easy to grow. You just scatter the seeds. In the last live episode, I showed you the process of how to grow amaranth from seed. I also showed you the process how to transplant if you want to transplant or if you want them to just grow in the same pot up to maturity. I have the, watched the last live episode. You'll see how I did it. Here I have a, uh, this is another traditional vegetable. Very nutritious very thin thin leaves it's called crotolaria so it has come up here beautifully it's a nutritious vegetable let me move you to this point here i have potatoes i planted potatoes here from scrap so they are yet to emerge. So stay tuned to see. Then on this side, remember I had some collards which came to the end of the road. So I have uprooted some collards. I haven't planted anything else on this bed. There, that is cabbages, cabbages. And next here I have some spinach and some radish this is onion this is an onion here this here so i'll get it later so let me show you the amaranth and uh before you get to the corner here i have some sweet potatoes that are ready for harvest so these ones are to be removed. Here I have some cabbages, some salads, some more cabbages, and then here I have the amaranth. So in these containers I space the amaranth at least. They are not so close together. I just give a space of centimeters apart. Then there are drought tolerant crops. As long as just they get some little water, they will continue to grow and they grow so fast. These amaranth plants are like, uh, they are about to hit four weeks. This should be the fourth week for the amaranth. And they are looking nice. So from this amaranth, you can get the, the tender leaves. You can harvest the tender leaves. Or you can let it grow to maturity to get the grain. You can see the other ornamental plants are still dry. In the last episode, I showed you that the clouds were gathering and I thought it would rain in like two days. <laughs> uh, it, it hasn't rained yet. So they are still dry. Still dry, still dry, still dry. No rains yet. Okay, then I, I, the, also in the, should be the third live episode where I showed you my
cucumbers in containers so before we get to the containers these are my beautiful beautiful sunflowers strong so I hope they will attract more pollinators already I have more birds visiting my garden because their seeds are green and also when I water the plants they still have water so I'm getting so many birds at least to come and pollinate my plants so behind this is uh, this is sweet potato The sweet potato behind the you can't see from here let me try and move it so that is sweet potato that is sweet potato there there i want to plant some more ginger the other ginger plants are here also doing good so ginger is another drought tolerant plant and it's doing good so this is more than uh, it's more than four months in because at some point they were not getting water so when i started watering them when I got some water, so they started coming up. So this is ginger and this is ginger also. This one has not emerged. It takes time to emerge, but it will still emerge in a short time. Now here I have my Beautiful cucumber plants that have started flowering. So let's finish with this block before I move to the other block. So they are flowering when they are so small, which means I will have to pinch the flowers to give the plant time to grow before it can grow the flowers grow the cucumbers you see they they are flowering and these containers are awesome 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 containers to use in your garden because remember it does not dry up so fast i watered the cucumber plants yesterday so right now when i put my finger in it's still wet I put my finger in, into the containers, it's still wet, despite the temperatures went up to 29 degrees Celsius, but the containers are still wet. Any excess water, when I watered the cucumber plants, drained out, but now the roots are being just kept constantly moist. Then I just do deep watering once. Not, I don't water every day, which means it's excellent, excellent, excellent method to grow your crops when you are facing drought so my task right now is to get more containers and modify them like this do watch the video on how i use different container modifications in my garden as we go around i'll show you some so these flowers you have to pinch them what i'll do is that i'll pinch them let me try and set it down So the plant is still too young to start producing cucumbers but if you let them they will still grow but the best option is just to pinch them so you pinch and remove them 
look at this so beautiful but <laughs> you have to remove them and give the 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 plants let the plant focus on growing bigger before it can now start focusing on producing flowers and setting fruits so i'm going to pinch all the flowers oh, this one has another flower too so you remove them so that the plant can concentrate on growing on developing a stronger root system once the root system fills up properly in the container it can take up more water it can take up more nutrients the plant will be stronger it will take up more k more potassium for flowering and fruiting and i'll get very 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 big fruits nice fruits so here this is where i'm going to support the this fence where i'm going to support the plants next year is my passiflora that has survived so it's another good plant to grow <laughs> excuse me to grow in your garden so the cucumbers are looking good looking looking good watch my video on how to plant cucumbers at home and keep it here to see more how you can grow cucumbers in containers i will share the steps so look at this so for this cucumber plant let me set you down For this particular cucumber plant, it was it was weak, but it's trying to revive. The containers were in the middle of the garden, and I think the dogs jumped over the container and snapped the plant. So at this point, it's broken, but I've tried to push in some nails and support it that I don't lose it completely and I see it's already flowering so I'll get some tape also to support it to make sure I, it survives so the cucumbers are looking good with minimal watering so I will not have to water even for three more days before I come back and water so I just want to top and let the water seep in slowly so it's a good method Let's move to the next plant. This one is also flowering. It's flowering. And flowers. Yes, now let's move to some more fruits. So my chili plants are reviving. These chili plants has not revived yet up to now i've been watering it but i think because the plant was so small and it didn't have an, an expansive root system the drought really, really dealt with it so i'm hoping it will revive like the other chili plants that have green leaves now so coming to this portion and now i have chili fruits look at this can you see the chili fruits the big fat chili <laughs> look at this those are chili and remember it was dry and look at the tip is still dry so I'm just letting it fall off instead of coming to cut the dry parts because remember the whole plant was dry but now I have fruits this is another one this is another fruit here
This is another fruits. This other side, these are more fruits. More fruits. Up here. Same plant, these are more fruits. So this is the first chili plant. The first one to flower. And also it has more fruits. So the rest are also looking good. I'm hoping to get some more flowering and more fruits from the rest of the plants. This one is also showing some signs of some flowers. So let's move to the potatoes in a container. I have groundnuts in a container, potatoes in a container. These are my groundnuts. See, they are looking beautiful and nice. Then these are my lovely potatoes in a container that I started in sand. They had an expansive root system before I transplanted them to the container, so they have grown so fast. I've already done the first healing up of the containers. That is why you see I've added these parts and the box because I've been adding soil to the bottom part of the stem as the potatoes grow you keep on adding soil you keep on adding soil so that i can increase my harvest from this container this these ones i planted like a week later after this so they're at this stage already and this is one week and they are so fast because I planted potatoes that have um, sprouted and they already have roots. So they have shot up so fast and I need also to do some, some healing up, some adding some soil to the bottom part of the plant. As it continues to grow, I add some soil. Then I've been using these leaves, some organic matter in between. As I add soil, I add the leaves because I can't get grass at the moment. It is dry. It is still dry. But the good news is that some parts of the country have received some rain. So we are hoping also this area will receive some rain soon. Those are also groundnuts in a container. So I have fewer seeds. Here I have more seeds. Let's move to the next block. Let's see. I want to show you this. So this neck plant, they are also holding on because I don't water them. I don't have enough water to go around to water all the snake plants. But as you can see, some of them are still, they are still growing. So when it rains, they will also shoot up and become stronger. They will shoot up and become stronger after some slight rains. Excellent plants to have in your garden. Then they're going to cover all this area and I will always have some green in my garden. So at the start, things are really tough. But as you can see, the garden is transforming from the bare ground to a productive garden. Here I have my container for planting my pumpkin. And as you can see, it has some beans. So these beans have already started flowering. So in this container, I'm going to transplant my pumpkin seedlings. They are still in their container, the seedling container. I have to give them grow more, more than uh, at least 15 centimeters before I transplant them because of the high heat and water stress in this area. So the, where they are, they are in a good condition. They are getting a lot of water in the small container. So I'm giving them time to grow. And I also planted another one directly here. It's inside here, in between. So I will harvest the beans 
and do some three pumpkin seeds. I hope you have seen the, the, the other pumpkin is here. So I have two more to bring to this container. So I can I will harvest the beans, the beans, and I will grow beans again. So the, the aim of growing beans in this container is just to supply the nitrogen that the pumpkin needs. So that's also another way to grow plenty of crops in your garden during drought. Also the beans will be covering the surface of the container so it doesn't dry up much and i have some corn on the side so i'm thinking of doing three because the container is more than 50 centimeters and it's deep and it does have drainage at the bottom so as long as it's wide and deep i can plant more seeds i will harvest the beans and plant more and they will be okay. So let's move to this other plant. Here I have my eggplant that is looking good. So the last time you saw the eggplant, it was very small. I think I shared a video, it was very, very small. Remember this eggplant had been affected by spider mites and I cut off the top and just left the stem, any leaves and the roots in the pot and later it started growing from the sides, from the bottom and this is what I have right now. I've mulched the container and the plant is looking good and strong. So right now instead of having one plant shooting up, I have two. There's one on this side and one on this side. You see? There's one on this side, one on this side. So I have two, which means I'll be able to harvest a lot of eggplants from this container. And in the same container, to keep the press away, I've planted some garlic. Don't know whether you can see. Let me take you closer. So in this same container, I have some garlic. Can you see the garlic? This is garlic here. And on this side also, this side also I have another seed. So the garlic will grow and the strong smell of garlic will act as a pest repellent. So look at this plant. Isn't it looking healthy and nice? So I'm planting the two companion plants, garlic and eggplant. The garlic to keep the pests away and the eggplant for beautiful fruits. Then here I have carrots that are looking nice and good. So you can have so many carrots in this container. So remember the weak seedlings that I was transplanting, they are no longer weak. Now they are so strong and looking nice. So I have several other containers with the carrots. Show you on this other side. So these are more carrots. This is a pineapple plant that is going through some stress. Remember, I don't have to plant the heads that are perfect. Some heads come from the market when the head has been squashed in the bag. So you still plant it and if you can see in the middle, it's growing. So with time, it will grow and become nice. This is another pineapple plant. These are the carrots. The snake plant, another pineapple plant, and my succulents. Oh, and by the way, I've started some beautiful succulents. They have the most beautiful, beautiful, woo, <laughs> beautiful stats you can see. I will share a video. Uh, they, are, they are a little bit further from here. So these are my pepper plants. 
These are my pepper plants. Look at this. Looking good, right? The pepper plants, I have some onions. These are the pumpkins. Here I have some more stats, and some are even pushing through. I want to show you. So these are pushing through, and these are beets. These are beetroots pushing through. So they need watering. So this is the soil I'm working with. I'm working with a soil that it's so difficult to grow crops, but I'm managing to grow some beautiful crops. So these ones need some watering. Let's see, let's see. Let me get some water. Let me just set you up and get some water. We are more than half an hour in. <laughs> oh my, oh my. So let me get some water. So for the beads, let me add some little water. So these are beets. So when you start your seeds when it's warm, and this is day three, this is day three, and they have already emerged without fail. I also see some as want to emerge from here. Here I have tomatoes and eggplants. I also have leeks. I have the red bulb onions. Here are the spring onions, the white onions. This is by Collier's plants. So this part broke off, but it had some roots, so I've just put it into the water to see whether it will grow some coleus plants. So if I get from this point, if, I, if it grows more, I can take it and latch it to another container, and that's how I'm populating my garden with coleus plants. So right now I have like, uh, like four pots with coleus plants that I've been populating just slowly and it's working so plenty of water to seep in these are my pumpkins I have papaya seeds And more sunflower. The more sunflowers I can place strategically at different points in the garden, the more pollinators I can attract to my garden. Because you see, right now I'm getting some plants that are flowering and I need more pollinators around. 
So let's turn this side. So you can see this side. Here I have potatoes in an underground container. And they are looking good. This, this should be the second week for these potato plants. And they have already shot up. And it's more than 15 centimeters. So for this one, I will just bring up the soil. And I will not remove the I will not remove the mulch. I will just add more soil on top of the mulch. Continues growing. To ensure that I don't compact the ground. Look at this. They are looking so nice. So I've already shared a video, but they were not at this height. So right now they are looking good. These are other sunflower plants. Also looking good. So I have like um, three positions already for the sunflower plants. One, the one I showed you in block two. And there's another one right there. In the cage you see this this is a cage with the sunflower plants because now i'm getting some birds that want to chew on my soft leaves and plus the dogs the dogs when they want something green because there's no green around there's no grass they, they can't chew on the grass to help their tummy so they are looking for the soft tender plants and my sunflower plants are being targeted here I have watermelon in a container. Look at this. Look at how beautiful it is. And I see that they, are, they, are, they want to face that side, but I direct them to this side so that they can get enough sun. So these are my watermelon plants. See? So nice. So this, I will just direct it. As it continues growing, I will direct them so that they can be where there's plenty of sun. This is another sunken bed with a sheet underneath. So it helps me save water. As I get more mulch from the Grivelia tree, I'm adding more mulch to the surface. The Grivelia tree is not giving a lot of mulch because it's dry. It's almost naked. This was my mango plant and I don't know what affected it, but I lost it. And right now I started another mango plant from seed. Remember this? Look, it's already growing. I started it from seed. And this coleus plant, I also want to get some more coleus plants for this, which means I'll cut the top and get some from the side. My avocado seedling is here. Then here I'm starting my sweet potatoes in sand and in water. Right here I have a corn that I've done companion planting corn and some amaranth. Because I don't have mulch again, mulch again is a problem. So people are expecting that someone should just get mulch and mulch the beds. But what happens if you cannot get the mulch? It's just unexpected to have a garden, have plants in beds, in beds, and you don't have mulch. So when the drought hits hard, you will not get mulch. Look at my trees. See the tree that usually has so many leaves, it is dry. The Dovialis kafra, the mulch that it provides, you have to be careful because it has thorns. If you go getting mulch from it, thorns. Then the hibiscus tree also, weekly I get some mulch for the sunflower plants. So here I see some... The amaranth is already coming up. 
and it will form a good cover. Let me get you closer. There's amaranth here. This. Can you see some green? Let me add some water. So this is amaranth coming up. See? So at least they will cover this bed once they come up. So the, the top is very dry, but at the bottom, you see it's not that dry. Look at this. And remember, the, this, this corn and the they don't need so much deep watering. So at the top, because of evaporation and the high heat, you see the ground is cracked and dry like this. But you see, when I try to put my finger inside, you see the soil is not crumbling. I can form a ball from the soil. So which means it's not that dry. But I can add some little water for the new amaranth that is coming up all over the bed so that's beautiful beautiful progress wow that's lovely so this garden is transforming every day every day the garden is transforming let me add some water to the amaranth So it's coming up beautifully. So I'm just adding some little water for the for the, the seedlings that are emerging. Because the corn roots still have water, the bed is not dry. But the high heat it's causing the top of the bed to look, it's like it's so dry and the issue is mulch. That's the unexpected truth about mulch. You think that you will get mulch easily but now unless you go and buy, it becomes another challenge. So that is just for the seedlings. enough for the seedlings and right at the corner you see I have some mint that has really struggled I started the mint in water and it was drying up yet it's in water because of the high heat so here I have my beautiful sunflower plants so I've tried to cage them because somebody the birds and the dogs, they are just targeting the soft leaves. Look at this. So these are not... <laughs> these are not pests that have chewed the leaves. You see? This. At the bottom. On this other side. So this is week five. This is week five for this... Giant sunflowers. <coughs> Excuse me. Week five for these giant sunflowers. But they are coming to chew the leaves. Look. See? Okay, here I have my beautiful okra plants. And again, I don't have to water every day because the cowpeas, the black-eyed peas, are 
gathering the ground swell. And these ones are ready for harvest. In a few days, they can come and harvest. So they're covering the ground well. I don't have to water every day. I try to get some mulch from the Drovialis Kafra and put it on the side. But the okra is still in, in between here. Still looking good. So we have a harvest video coming up. Next is the zucchini. That is already flowering. So today in the morning, I found this zucchini with a flower. But then remember, it's only a... It's a female flower. And there are no males around. So though it looks already like a zucchini, it will not grow and develop into a zucchini because there was no coordination. Let me bring you closer so that you see it's a female flower. So that's a female. Zucchini growing zucchini in containers. It's looking good. I added some mulch from the Dovialis. So right now there are no male flowers, which means there is no pollination. So these are my zucchinis in a container. Oh, it's flying. <laughs> it's flying away. So, so these are my zucchinis in a container and also they have flowers. So this was the first flower. It has already closed up. There was no male flower, which means there was no fertilization. So I hope some of these male flowers are still behind. This will be another female. If we do, get, if we get a male flower that is open, this was another female, and the flower is already closing up because it takes uh, like by midday. If you wake up in the morning and you find the flowers open by midday, by noon, midday, around midday or up to noon, you, the flowers will close up. Once the hot sun comes in, the flowers will just close up and that is it. If it has not been pollinated, you don't get zucchini. So this one is also another excellent way of growing zucchini because I don't have to water all the time. I watered them yesterday and if you touch the pots, they are so wet. If you put your finger in, they are wet. They are not dry. So they are looking good. So soon I'm getting some zucchini. So at this stage, you have to give your zucchinis uh, K and P, phosphorus and potassium, especially K. K, the potassium is very, very, very important. It's crucial if you want them to do, to have some good fruiting and flowering. So I'm adding, I'm giving them my organic fertilizer that is high in K. These banana peels were in water for more than, for more than eight months. The last time I posted the video on how I was, I was changing the garden. So that's the time I had this, I started building up this organic fertilizer. And now, right now, it has even changed color. So it's not clear anymore and you can't see pills. So this is one container. I have also, have, I have another container at another position. Still adding the banana pills. So I diluted this and gave it to my plants. And you see, they are looking good in the hot sun. I don't have an issue, even if I step out, even if I'm not today, I'm not in the garden for two days, I know they will not be dry. 
because they have sufficient water in the container. Any excess drained out, but now the soil is nice and moist. So just deep watering once is sufficient. And more fruits are growing. So I hope I will get some more males. The females have come up so fast. I hope I will get some more males soon. So this bed is ready for the capsicum. And there's one last plant I want to show you. This side of the garden. I'm so excited about it. So this one is so far from the other plants because I want to form a good a good earth with it. Just at the entrance and look at this. So I transplanted plus So that's right at the corner. And finally, I want to show you my, I want to show you my succulents. These are my succulents. Look at this. See this? So beautiful. See? So they are growing. See the red parts at the bottom? Let me try and focus. So my succulents are doing great. That point. This is a snake plant, the succulent. The snake plant again. So I still have more plants I have to show you around. I will get there in good time. Right now I'm dealing with a lot of planning, getting more containers into the garden to ensure that my garden remains green even during the droughts. So the indoor plants, they're in a good environment. That's why I've not given them so much attention, but they're still growing. And that is all. For this live episode check in again to see the progress of the garden thank you